a lot of times when you're looking up how to get into the games industry, people will be like, oh, go to this school, or oh, just work on your portfolio, or oh, you should try learning how to make this and putting this in your portfolio. Um, but very few times do I find comprehensive assets online of how to actually like edit your own portfolio from the perspective of like a hiring manager if you're trying to get a job in games. So today I'm going to spread some of my advice that I've gotten in several university courses that I've been forced to take on editing your portfolio, um, as well as the multiple game jobs I've had at this point. I've worked for five different game studios, I think. Um, disclaimer is that none of them have been what one might call AAA, but nonetheless, I think after five different game jobs, uh, we're gonna see how to tailor this portfolio of what I've accrued over time through university because I go to school for a game design degree. Uh, made a whole video about that if you're interested. I'll probably remake it once I graduate or I'm closer to graduating. Um, and like I said, from working game jobs and being hired in the past, as well as taking university courses that are specifically about thinking about how your portfolio can be tailored over time as you grow as an artist and as a game maker um, to show what you're capable of. I'm gonna be using ArtStation because I am like a game artist. So for me, it's all about visuals and <laughs> displaying the visual creations and visual assets that I've made. Um, if you are on the programming side of things or audio or production or any other thing that's not like the art side of games then this is probably not the right video for you because i'm very much a game artist as opposed to like a game anything else <laughs> programmer or whatever um but if you're in anything that would be visual so that would be like illustration or concept or anything 3d then this is probably meant for you as we can see here, we have my art station. What I'm gonna be going through is actually going and editing my art station, which I haven't, I mean, I've been uploading work as I make it, but there comes a time after uploading for a year or so usually that you wanna go back and overhaul everything. Another big reason for this is because actually recently within the past like two or three months, I have like completely pivoted as an artist like personally where um before like early this year you would could ask me what i do and i'll be like i'm a game illustrator 2d asset creator concept artist whatever and now i'm like you know what mm, i think i want to be a 3d environmental artist <laughs> so you know that sort of radical overhaul is probably the whole point of me going to college for this sort of thing to figure out that sort of stuff um but basically what that means is that for this demonstration, I'm gonna be focusing on two specific sections, which will be 2D, specifically illustration, and then 3D environment, um, which if you look at my tagline on my on my name there, uh, it is it's, it specifically says game environment artist and illustrator, right? So that's my first piece of advice is that you really need to be specific before that, all I had there was, well, before, in the very beginning, I had it as game art student. And so what that says to a recruiter is that you are unconfident and unspecific. I'm gonna try and be tailoring this portfolio to like aspirational AAA sort of thing. Even though, like I said, I have never personally worked AAA. We're thinking how a AAA recruiter might be thinking based off of other AAA portfolios. So for the purpose of my 3D portfolio specifically, um, we'll just go ahead and hit 3D. Notice also, by the way, that this is the URL, like my name, artstation.com slash my name, right? So that means that when you give somebody your portfolio, this is immediately what they're gonna see. What I like about this current layout is that it's super colorful and like super graphic and it catches the eye. But personally, a lot of the art in this header is like outdated, so we're gonna fix that later. But the problem with this is that you're gonna be seeing everything. And so that's not specific if you are like a multidisciplinary artist like me and you're applying to a specific sort of job. So if I wanted to apply as an environmental artist, then a lot of this is just stuff getting in the way. So what I would first do if I were applying for environmental is I just go straight to 3D and I would send this link up at the top specifically about 3D 
if I were applying for a job. But now that we're here, let's go ahead and just start trimming. And this is going to be really like something that I'm going to have trouble watching back because I'm the sort of artist where anything that's like even slightly dated, I hate. <laughs> so a lot of this work is like pretty old. I've already cleaned up the stuff that's like years old. Um, but even still, there's going to be a lot of stuff on this, especially in like the illustrative side. And I'm going to be like, oh, this sucks. And this makes me uncomfortable to look at. And the very first thing is that if you look at a piece and all you see are flaws um, and how dated it looks and how much better you could do, then get rid of it. <laughs> if, if there's something in your portfolio that you as an artist are not like impressed by, then why do you think that anybody else will be impressed by it especially if it's like old and you can do better if it's something that you just made and you're like well i can do better that's different <laughs> that's just that's just you being self-critical i bet um but if it's something that you like le you think you are legitimately like it reflects poorly of you then right off the bat don't even consider it a piece of your portfolio you need to only be having the best in your portfolio especially at the AAA level if you can show um like even as little as like three or four amazing things, that's gonna save everyone time instead of showing like 20 mediocre things, right? Because in AAA, when you're specialized, you really are spending months of your life potentially working on one amazing thing at the AAA level. That's why they have like hundreds of people all working on like one specific thing. They have the ability to do that at that level. So just keep that in mind um, instead of being prolific just put your best forward and put it on top because another big thing is saving the people who are reviewing your portfolio time so that's another reason why being prolific maybe isn't the best unless everything you make is literally amazing then just focus on showing what's your best because you have to think about it there are literally probably thousands of portfolios that these hiring people have to look at at that level right because everybody wants to work for the big studios so if your stuff is taking just too long to view and sift through to see the best stuff they're gonna be like what's the point you know <laughs> they're just gonna move on you maybe you have to consider in your portfolio that you have like 30 seconds to wow somebody so if you're bogging it down with like crap then nobody's gonna want to do that so let's just get into the actual like dissection of what's here um Let's start at the very bottom one because in ArtStation, that's going to be your oldest one. So what this is, is a deconstructed pen that was an assignment um, for two years ago. You can see it was posted. It was made even longer ago than that. It was a freshman year Maya assignment. Um, there's a lot wrong with this post, <laughs> um, but it doesn't show things like, like a polygon count or anything like that, which is fine. I guess, but there's no gray box, there's nothing. There's no information about this other than the final render. And you can actually get away with that if not for the fact that, that this is like a noisy render. <laughs> like there's noise in it. So, I mean, automatically that shows a sort of lack of patience, you know, to be able to render out noise or even go in and edit away the noise. Um, the presentation itself is like, almost good except for the noise but in general you always want to avoid putting things in your portfolio that look like a class assignment like that's something that annoys a lot of people some people are more okay with that but there's a lot of recruiters who can tell really immediately um that it was a class assignment and i even say directly it's like a class assignment but i'm not talking about like something you made in class i mean like something that everybody made in class you want to avoid that sort of thing because if everybody has a pen um, and everybody has, uh, I don't know, whatever your class all made, then that's like showing a lack of creativity if you've followed direct instruction in a tutorial on how to do everything. Um, and also there's a higher chance that other people's pens will be better than yours or other people's whatever will be better than yours. And ultimately these sorts of jobs are like a competition to get. So it's a lot harder to stand out with the same thing that everybody else does so we're just gonna go ahead and just completely shelve this um and that's as simple as going in and unpublishing that and saving that um and then we'll just go back to my profile right and we can see that it's not there anymore so i'm gonna do that with several more of these um 
I think immediately without me even having to say anything, there was pretty like a pretty vast difference between that pen and some of the later stuff anyway. So if if there's something that brings everything down, <laughs> you should definitely be getting rid of it. And not to say that the pen was the worst thing on here. I think just immediately looking at that pen was actually probably one of the better of my older assignments, but it still wasn't good enough. It, it doesn't reflect my current standard. So get rid of it. This was my first ever assignment um, when we had our 3D animation class um, in Maya. And it's actually pretty cute, pretty good. It holds up well, but there's nothing here about process. There's nothing here about breakdown. And there are some animation errors, like the eyes tend to lag. Um, you'll notice right there, <laughs> one eye moves, one eye doesn't or whatever. And, you know, keeping in mind that this is my first thing ever, that's, it was a pretty great assignment for me at the time. But just because something is your first attempt ever, and that has some sort of personal significance to you, does not mean that a recruiter is gonna hire you because you did great on your first try. What they actually want is experience and confidence in a software, not like a fluke of like, ooh, you did that really well your first time. Like there's a sentimentality that I have clearly, um, but that doesn't mean that it's gonna get me a job. So ultimately I'm just gonna take it off, especially also because it doesn't reflect what I would actually do now. Um, it doesn't reflect a style that is going to be beneficial to me in what kind of job I want. So we're just gonna get rid of it. This one, this was from a job I had actually uh, for a very specific like client thing. And so it's good that there's these breakdowns, right? And you see these like different sort of views and angles of all the characters but this post is misleading because well it's many things it's generally unhelpful because i am not aiming to do character work at this time and even if i were it definitely wouldn't be in daz 3d do you see that daz 3D? that is not like a normal industry sort of thing it's like a cheat software like animation thing like character animation with like pre-made characters and props and stuff as opposed to me going in and like hand modeling. So none of these were hand modeled. This was basically assembled and rendered by me. Um, which I am not very descriptive with in the description. So it's not really relevant to my work in any way or any work that I would be doing or would like to do. And it's pretty misleading about what my actual skill level is. So I'm gonna get rid of it. Okay, just a few more posts on the 3D side. Um, let's talk about this because actually I could consider keeping this in my portfolio. Why this is good is because this is a 3D environment made for VR that is in a game and I made like every single piece of, um, I think actually the cars and some of the there's like some tiny details that were purchased, right? But that's okay. When you're an environment artist, you're not making every single thing that you see by hand. What matters here is I did assemble everything. A lot of this stuff was handmade and hand textured, hand lit. And it's also my only example in my portfolio of something being used or assembled and lit in engine, okay? Because this is actually all, all the screenshots you should see here, everything was assembled in engine. And that's a pretty big deal. So we have a lot of views here. Um, the the ambience and stuff, it it's pretty spot on. The whole point of it was that it was supposed to be like, um, like a VR fighting game environment where you're being like, you're battling in the parking lot here. So this this gif right here is low key what's saving this whole thing in my portfolio, in my opinion, um, because you can actually see how well it reads in VR. Uh, I mean, obviously this is not actually AAA level in any capacity, um, but it is for VR and it is, you know, semi-passable in-game. There's some bits like, this is pretty poorly done. <laughs> like, I, I don't think that this is to a standard that I would personally say matches my current standard, but, what I sh will do is I will clean it up live here for you and make it something um, something that would work better with my portfolio so that I can still keep it because it's it's pretty relevant to be able to 
say that you have an environment that's VR ready in engine. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna rename it a little and lean into that this was professional experience because that's what's gonna read well. Um, and in the future, hopefully it will have more in engine work that I can replace this piece with completely. But until then, I'm just gonna try and make it look as best as I can for the setting. Because sometimes you just have to work with what you have. So it is a 3D game environment for VR fighting game set VR. And we're gonna get rid of the really ugly things like this image right here of the surface painting, which I was proud of, so it was sentimental for me, that's why I included it. But it's not really good looking. And then this also, this one here, serves no function. Um, so we'll keep these other ones. And then what we're gonna do is we will make sure that this is, so models, textures, lighting, all by me with intention for rendering. And so this is actually not 100% true. So I'll say modeling and texturing done in blender that's important you want to say you want to give your technical specifications about what you know how to do right so modeling and texturing done in blender um brought in for lighting in unity supplemental of course i can't spell supplemental props from unity asset store company assets cool so everything else is still good i don't know why i don't have all of the gameplay level design games of real time 3d environment and then we'll also just put in hard surface sure no how about lighting cool um and we're gonna do one final thing to really elevate this sort of project, right? So we are gonna take this image here and we are going to download this and we're gonna upload a custom, a custom thumbnail to make, to really lean into that this is for a project that is real. So we are gonna open up we're going to open up that image plus the official logo, which I actually had to like, I have to like edit out. <laughs> so we're going to take this and we're going to put it here. Okay. I fixed it. You know what happened is I accidentally made, I accidentally made, um, instead of 500 by 500 pixels, I did 500 by 500 inches and that took 40 gigabytes of my scratch disc. So I was like, what's going on? <laughs> That's what was going on. Don't mind that, ha ha ha, I swear I'm knowledgeable. <laughs> so anyway, this might actually be big, but what we're basically gonna do is make our custom thumbnail here, um, which will just be in a square format and we'll do it in such a way that flatters the image slightly, even though it's very ugly. Um, and we're gonna take our logo. Um, if you wanted to do something like put in like the programs that you see, like sometimes you'll see like Blender or Maya or whatever the program was, a logo up at the top, that's generally okay. And here's another thing I'll say about logos is that if you're making fan art, you cannot put a logo on that of like the official thing because then it implies that you worked on the official title, but you didn't. So for legal reasons, only put logos on things that you like actively worked on yourself, like to the point where your credits or your name would be in like the credits for what you did. Um, otherwise it's like disingenuous. So don't do that. And I'm gonna go through and do this with all of the things in my portfolio that are from an official title because that way you just look more professional. Like you don't want people to have to read something to know that it's from like an official thing that was actually made and not just like fan work or, oh, I hit the wrong button or um, like a sort of whatever made up thing from your head, which can be fine, but putting that little logo just makes it look 
more official. Um, so anyway, back to it. We're going to head on to our next thing. This was for an official project, but it looks pretty bad. And even though it's animated and cute and it has some great views and you can see the, all the textures and stuff and the concept, which is great, it doesn't reflect my current standard for my portfolio. Uh, and it looks, in my opinion, pretty bad. I mean, people say it looks cute, but we're just gonna get rid of it because it's not relevant to the job that I want. And notice that I'm saying not published instead of just deleting things because I think it's good to look back on some of your archived work in your portfolio if you ever want to revisit for like remaking and stuff. Like let me give you an example. So jumping ahead a little, this is a more recent render that I did in Blender um, that actually was a remake of a class project, like a group project. Obviously this one wasn't with the group, this was just me to try and show how I've grown, you know, to be able to do that. But this was not on my portfolio because somebody in one of my portfolio one of my portfolio review classes said this was like the weakest piece of my portfolio by far, which I was like, that's a little mean. But it's it's not strong enough compared to my other stuff, but I didn't anyway. I went in and I thought that the concept could be interesting, so I just remodeled it. So it's kind of like a fun thing to show like the original project, right? Versus the now. So that's why I like to keep um, stuff archived as opposed to just deleting it. So anyway, this is for the same company that I made the owl for. And it is basically like irrelevant <laughs> to my, like this was a logo for something. This was a logo for something, but I, don't think it demonstrates anything that anything else on my portfolio doesn't already do. So we're just going to get rid of it. So now we move on to everything else here uh, has been stuff that I've made for fun of my own volition recently. So we can talk about how I present these things and why they're going to stay. So this is like my actively desk setup and it looks pretty accurate um the problem with this post is that there's no like process because this was actually my first time jumping into 3d in a while um but it does like look good i think like i think there's a lot of points of greatness here in this i mean little details like wires texturing on the carpet. There's some things that I would probably do it slightly differently now in terms of like more textural work, but going for like, like a cutesy sort of almost plasticky like toy style while still having some sort of realism. I think that this achieves that pretty well and it's got a lot of good lighting moments. So I'm fond of it. <laughs> Clearly, I think it's, it's cute um, and it doesn't diminish especially in this like cropped setting here. I like to crop my dioramas that I've made. Um, I think it looks like a real space, you know, generally. So I, I'll keep it for now. This one is the one that I feel most contentious about because there's a lot wrong with this render. This was my original render in the style of that other one where it was like a toy render almost. And these both are giving like a different sort of feel. Let me tell you now, this is the point in the video where I'm gonna go to my reference. Cause all the other stuff, I had no reason to even check my reference cause I knew that it was like totally outdated and not up to my par. But let's just say my model for this sort of industry job that I want is this guy, right? Um, here's a great portfolio from, we're gonna say Ali, uh, who works at Naughty Dog as environmental as an environmental artist. So let's just say that this is my standard. So his portfolio is pretty typical of a lot of AAA portfolios. And you'll notice that there are just like, just about a dozen pieces here, maybe a little more. It's not super prolific, right? But what you do see is pretty phenomenal, right? Even these starter props, which I lack in my portfolio, which I would go in next and start working like on prop based stuff here. These are pretty exquisite and you see the the wireframe that's great and then you move on to like textural work and then finally you know the work on the last of us which is clearly amazing right that game was visually very stunning so keeping this in mind right this doesn't really fit you know so as I, we move forward in my portfolio that's why i started thinking a little differently. You'll see a couple of these toy style dioramas. 
that's why I decided to pivot towards a more like realistic-ish sort of style trying to move into photorealism into my more recent piece that I made I, this was yesterday actually and for me filming this was trying to f make a photorealistic replica of this is <laughs> Dakota Johnson's kitchen <laughs> uh which I think is very swag but what's important here is we do see a process gif and some of the other ones I have like full speed builds that I have attached to the post which I think are important in the sort of level of your career is showing like your process and how you make these things sometimes it's as simple as showing your wireframe like the props for the extinguisher like showing your wireframe here is a very good way to show your process but just directly showing like how I lay things out and move things around and start applying textures and obviously this isn't perfect like the steel on this is too um perfect and too pristine and there's definitely little bits uh the tiling and stuff I, you know I'm gonna be immediately critical of all my own work but overall when you see this you can immediately see that the point is that I'm trying to make a replica and I can do that to an extent and also keeping in mind this was six hours whatever I can make excuses all I want about <laughs> why it's not perfect but this is certainly more in line with what I would be trying to go for here with realistic environments than this and so honestly if we're if we're being not sentimental and just being realistic I should just scrap this one and so I will <laughs> Um, which feels bad because this is one of my more recent ones, but trying to get hired, not feel good. So that's horrible. You should feel good about being hired um, and not <laughs> and not bad. But anyway, so we've condensed this into what's this? One, two, three, four, five, six, six pieces down from maybe almost double that, right? Um, just to quickly go over it, these other ones are like dioramas here, but I personally really like how full the space is beginning to feel that you could do more, but um, you'll see that I have like a whole like process video here, speed build. I'm not going to play that now, obviously. If you wanted to, clearly you can see what my art station is, so you can go check it out if you're interested. Um, but yeah, uh, none of these other ones are for like official projects like this one. So that's why I'm keeping this one, even though it's just a slightly lower standard or beneath my current standard, it's still good to show that I have the capacity to do that sort of thing. And then, like I said, hopefully I'll be able to work in engine again soon and then replace that with something that's more up to my par. And then the rest of this looks pretty good. Um, obviously I'm going to continue to be working and uploading and this is sort of like a, you should have a drive to continuously improve in order to be, you know, hireable because <laughs> that's something that they like to see. Um, but that's it for 3D. We're going to go in and we're going to ignore my storyboards and concept art sections because to be honest, there's a high chance that I just completely eliminate those because they're not really relevant to the jobs that I'm trying to get more so now. But I'm not getting rid of them completely because there is a chance that I will try and apply for 2D jobs as well. So keeping that in mind, let's go in and cut some of my illustration pieces, okay? And this one hurts me so much more. Like the 3D one hurts. Like cutting that basement one like hurts my feelings. This is going to hurt my feelings even more because to me, illustrating is a much more like self-invested process and I don't know if this is going to be relatable to anybody else who's like I feel like every artist is probably like this but it's just these are like my babies more so like 3d environments yeah they're my babies too but illustration it's like more intimate it's very difficult for me to explain but we're gonna go in and start from the oldest which is fun fact I actually won GDC like narrative contest back in 2020 um, or maybe it was for 2019, but anyway, the point was that I couldn't actually go to the, the winner summit and present this poster that I painted because of COVID. <laughs> so, you know, it's nice to show this because it was kind of a big achievement, but ultimately the illustration it suck itself, um, is not good. So I'm going to 
not publish it. I mean, it's just that simple, really. Like, it's nice to say that I have it, but I could just say, you know, <laughs> well, yeah, I did win this, but... Most of these bottom... Like, this one here, I remember at the time, I thought it was spectacular, and I have this process gift as well, but... um much like the other one this is like several years old at this point and although the lighting is pretty nice and some of the textural effects which you can see is like a precursor to my like 3d interest anatomically it is not good enough for me if there's if there's perspective issues and anatomical issues like a fundamental artistic issue wrong with your piece you shouldn't have it in your portfolio if you're trying to get hired on the basis of being like a professional with anatomy or whatever. So this one I loved too at the time because I was once again exploring space and lighting and texture. Um, so it kind of makes sense why I ended up going into like 3D environment. But every single time I've had my portfolio class with the same guy, the same teacher, the head of my program, he has always been like, this should not be in your portfolio because there's some perspective issues. And I've always been like, no, no, I love this one. I love this one. And he's right. You know, it, at this point, <laughs> and there's no process or anything. The image itself, I really do think is pretty, but it, it's not portfolio ready if there's a perspective issue. That's like a fundamental thing. So we're just going to have to get rid of it. Sorry. There's no process stuff here, which, you know, sucks. Like you should be giving some ideas to your thought process but overall it's readable you can tell who it is and it's graphic and flashy and pretty nice um this one as well this is some more clearly i like dragon age there's um i made some stylistic choices here that i wouldn't normally make but it turned out nice i <laughs> like i like it the same guy who was like you need to get rid of this piece because the perspective is bad was like there's a lot of good stuff going on here so we're gonna keep it even though it's pretty old um this was actually a redo of this version of it the same like character but trying to go for more like more like the original sort of flat heavily whatever you know the dragon age tarot cards they're really famous but trying to go for that sort of flatness as opposed to like painterly depth also this arm was totally horrible it's way buffer than this one. <laughs> like that this was a perspective issue this one i managed to get that or an anatomy issue but um here was another fan art this one i did manage to uh, these are a lot of redos <laughs> well because i like the same things in my life even though i get older i like the same things so i like to go in and just show my improvement over that course this one I liked, um, it's just a bust, which I never, I never like sit down and paint just like a head anymore. But this was actually a drawing I made with colored pencil back in 2015 that I thought was really amazing at the time. Um, that got me into an art program that kind of started a course for the whole, I can make a whole separate video about my artistic journey and like how things have changed over time. And I always think it's really fun to revisit stuff years later. Um, so this, this is pretty fun, this process and the idea of revisiting. And it still looks good. This looks good. So <laughs> we're going to keep it. Like I said, no logos on fan art. So here's something from a game that is published. Don't know if you've heard it. It's called Digital Janitors. <laughs> now on Steam. Well, it's free on Steam now, actually. But I'm not going to bother editing the thumbnail on this because I actually don't think the quality of the line in this is good. This was definitely a rush job at the end of the game. This animation is pretty nice, but I'm not really looking to do too much pixel. And if I was, I have better examples of pixel on my portfolio. So we are actually gonna archive this one. Though it's not the worst. You could say that it was stylistic, but personally, I, I, I don't like the, the line work there. So this one, is from the same game. You're gonna see several from the game. Um, almost has a logo on it, but <laughs> not quite. We're gonna download that and edit the thumbnail a little so it's better. So this is like a Steam asset suite package, the achievements of the game. If you go and play the game on Steam now for free, you will see <laughs> these achievements pop up throughout the course of the game. But this was like our final like promotion illustration that I made. I think at the time, it, I thought it was pretty amazing. It turned out well and i still think it looks good so the only thing we're going to edit actually is just putting that logo on it to give it that professionalism there you go 
See, so now you can see the art and it'll look more. If we do that same sort of standardized treatment with images underneath, then it'll all look like it's from a official professional project, <laughs> which is what we want. So this next one here is from the same project, Digital Janitors. This was what I meant about a better example of pixel art. Um, here you have, spoilers, a boss from in the game that um, animated by hand here, some reactions, um, the background, this was the original. So same thing, we're just gonna take this image, download it, and pop it into Photoshop. And just a few more to go. So th then we have this painting I did, um, which has lots of interesting things going on. This is that same desk that I have the 3D model of. I don't know if you remember. I only, it's the same desk. Um, and I like lots of things here. Like the light is interesting. It wouldn't go like this. It would probably just go like this but it's like a stylistic thing. Uh, my biggest problems with it are Crouton the Rat here and some of the painterliness of things like this that don't match other things. Uh, I have slight issues with it, but I think in general, actually, it's a pretty good illustration. So we're just gonna leave it. <laughs> um, Crouton the Rat is kind of, that is like what she looks like, but it looks a little silly. So we'll just stick with that there. Uh, this one over here, this was like a project, some character design work, but just fundamentally it has proportion issues on the body. I'm just going to get rid of it. Like, it's just that simple. If there's proportion issues, and also the faces later on, I just don't like. I look at it and I don't like it. So like I said, if something like is making you like uncomfortable and you're just like instantly like that's horrible on your portfolio just take it out i think same thing with this one this was for a game project that i worked on um where some of these are okay like this one is kind of okay but mostly i don't like it so i'm just gonna get rid of this whole thing and you'd think i'd feel bad just totally cutting my portfolio in half but <laughs> Not quite. It's a little cathartic. So this is from that same project. And this is all of like the splash art. My job for this entire class was to make like splash art and illustrating. And some of them are pretty fun and dynamic and actually have like interesting things going on. So, you know, stuff like this, it's pretty good. I'm gonna keep it actually. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is I'm going to at least do what I did with the other stuff and give it a thumbnail that associates it with a project because then people will know, oh, well, this is part of a project. This isn't just me making random stuff. This is something that belongs with something else, right? <laughs> the thing that I don't like about these um, is that it doesn't really go in a style with something like some other stuff that I've done or like my preferred style. I tr tend to try and go a little bit more realistic, but this was literally work. So, <laughs> I mean, it demonstrates an adaptability that I think ultimately is good. And if you go in my art station, not to plug it, I'm not trying to be in an art station influencer or anything, but if you check out my art station, on that specific post, you can actually find a link to play that game, which <laughs> for free. <laughs> A lot of student projects are just totally free and low-key a little fun. So anyway, tablet drawing still life. So this was a class I took where they literally give you an iPad or you take your iPad and you just go around and just draw stuff from real life. So this is life drawing on an iPad. Um, there's a lot of actually cool stuff in this. Even though it's framed as like a dump of like, like a sketch dump or whatever. There's some really interesting like architectural studies and prop studies and still lifes. I mean, it'd be good if I had reference what these were based off of to see, but like this one specifically is pretty cool. So ultimately I will keep this on there, but this drawing right here was like the final from that class. It doesn't meet my standard and it doesn't really demonstrate anything really. So I'm just gonna get rid of it. Though it is pretty funny and those are my rats. My real life rats. So that, it is sentimental, but 
ultimately irrelevant. And then there's one last illustration. This is from super re recently. Um, it's just some Star Wars fan art. Looks pretty good. <laughs> Not much more to say. Uh, I like it. And it doesn't hurt me. I think it, it shows some good likeness and it's nice. Whatever. We'll keep it. So there we go. We have trimmed down the illustration section and we've also trimmed down our 3D just so it's the best possible that I can muster at this moment. And then also we've added our logos to try and increase some of our like professionalism, if we can help it. Oh, that's the wrong one. So like I said, well, I'll just mention it. I do have storyboard stuff and concept art. Uh, for the most part, I'll probably just end up getting rid of these sections completely because they are not really the kind of job that I'm going for in the end. If I were to keep any of these, um, it'd probably be stuff that leans more towards UI design if I end up going more in that direction because some of this stuff does apply to UI. Um, and I might keep the storyboard section just because you'd be surprised how few storyboards there are <laughs> or storyboard jobs or like concept jobs or how few people there are in the industry with like professional storyboarding experience. But anyway, there's one last thing we need to do for the purposes of this video. And that's just concerned with our like overall presentation, right? Cause like I said, what we're trying to do here is focus on what a person sees when I send them my portfolio. And so if it's an illustration portfolio, this is what they'll see. If it's a 3D, it'll, this is what they'll see even less. This header is outdated, right? Because now most of this art isn't even still in my portfolio. And I'd like to switch some of it out for my 3D work. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly go into Photoshop and spruce it up a little. So I have the, not this, I have the original banner here, but this is a PNG. So I'm going to, it's going to take some finagling to overlay. But the first things that I want to get rid of for sure are the pieces that are no longer on my portfolio at all. And then we'll just probably cover up some of the illustration because I have a lot of like this sort of like rendered stuff. So we're going to replace with some of my more recents. Um, and still try and keep it colorful if we can help it. So I'm going to be satisfied with this for now. I'm, I can always go in and edit this as much as I please when I have more stuff that I like to round out the header. But for now, we're going to keep it like this. And I think it looks pretty good. And it's reflective of, you know, <laughs> my art, which is the point. And I'll also go ahead and change it out on my other socials to keep it even but there we go now we can see my 3d art as well as some illustrative stuff and that's about it um just to summarize the points at the end if you st stuck through um when you are showing stuff on your portfolio make sure it's your best make sure your best is at the top and don't be too prolific unless everything is amazing you only want to show basically the bare minimum that you can to get across that you are amazing. <laughs> you know, that's the whole point is that we want the whole process to be as simple and straightforward and easy as it can be for people who are tasked with looking through hundreds or, or thousands of portfolios every day. Like you want to stand out and you want to be quick and concise and your best. Um, you want to show your process so that if they're interested in what they see, they can figure out like how you did it because that's a great way to show how efficient you are as a as a creator um or that you're considering your professional you know you want to give professionalism first right uh putting logos on custom thumbnails is a great way to show professionalism if you've worked on stuff that has official logos um you're, you you want to minimize your clicks so like if you're applying for specific jobs and you have different folders or sections you want to not send a link to the whole portfolio just send links that are relevant exactly to that job um like i said make it as easy as possible for them to figure out how good you are don't make them search for stuff like it should all be laid out clearly and professionally
make your header pop, make your icon look like you or express you in some sort of way and make your tagline specific to what jobs you are trying to get. Like don't just write game artist if you're trying to be an environmental artist. Don't just write uh, writer if you want to be a game narrative designer, you know? And learn how to be able to say this is not good enough to your own work. And that can be really difficult for artists, like I said earlier, but that is so essential to making sure that you are able to edit your portfolio in an efficient way. Like even during the process of this video, I got rid of stuff that I like felt bad. Like it feels sad for me to say this is not good enough because it's something that I put a lot of work and effort into. But ultimately, if you are not willing to accept, you know, like objective reality about your work in in um, the perspective of the whole industry, then you're just being unrealistic and you're hindering yourself because the only way you can get better is by acknowledging that your old stuff probably wasn't good enough or not even, maybe it is good enough for the industry, but if you become complacent as an artist and as a creator, then where's the ambition and the drive, you know? And that's what they're looking for is that sort of ambition and that drive and that passion and that striving to learn and get better, so. It's much to think about. <laughs> I have taken many courses on this, uh, like specific university courses on editing your portfolio and learning how to kill your darling, as we call it, um, in the industry. But it's really imperative that you begin to alter uh, your perception of how good your work is by taking like a hard look at other people who are actually like professional and that's the best part of art station is you can go look at these professional portfolios and compare them to yours and don't maybe don't copy them directly but begin to model your art and your art making and your processes and all that stuff as best as you can towards your dream or goal studio and if you begin to have the same sort of mindset and vision and artistic style as what you're trying to emulate then it's all the easier to get that job because they see how committed you are. So, good luck. <laughs> Follow me on ArtStation. If you are like, I don't really know, like you're totally lost, like drop a link to your portfolio below and I will like legitimately go through and tell you what I think. <laughs> if you want, like why not? What else am I doing? Games, game dev, lots of fun.